Hello kids, welcome back to the laboratory. We're thrilled that you're back. We are going to hear another true story taken from the Bible from the Old Testament. It's from the book of Daniel and our good friends, the carpenters are going to present it to us today. But before we do that, I want you all to stand up. We're gonna sing a song. We're gonna sing Made For This. And I have a little surprise for you. Miss Brielle is gonna be joining us for this song. And I have a hunch Professor Klausma is going to show up. So let's sing. and besieged it with his armies. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim of Judah. When Nebuchadnezzar returned to Babylon, he took with him some of the gold and silver from the temple of God and placed them in his treasure house in the land of Babylonia. And then the king ordered his servant Ashpenaz to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, healthy, good-looking young men. Make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, gifted with knowledge and good sense, and have the poise needed to serve in the royal palace. Teach these young men the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily ration of the best food from his own kitchen. They were to be trained for a three-year period, and then some of them would be made his advisors in the royal court. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief official renamed them. Daniel would be called Belteshar, Hananiah, Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, and Azariah was called Abednego. Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. 
he asked for permission to eat other things instead. Now God had given the chief official great respect for Daniel, but he was alarmed by Daniel's suggestion. My lord, the king has ordered that you eat his food. If you become pale and thin, I am afraid the king will have me beheaded for neglecting my duties. Daniel talked it over with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief official to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Abednego. Test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables, Daniel said. At the end of 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's rich food. Then you can decide whether or not to let us continue eating our diet. The attendant agreed and tested them for 10 days. At the end of 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked healthier than the other young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So the attendant fed them only vegetable instead of the best food from the kitchen. And God gave these four young men the ability for learning in literature and science. And God gave Daniel special ability in understanding the meanings of visions and dreams. When the three-year training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief official brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked to them all, and none of them impressed him as much as Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So they were appointed to his regular staff of advisors in all matters requiring the wisdom and balanced judgment. The king found the advice of these young men to be ten times better than that of all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom. Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus's reign. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. What an incredible story. Daniel and his friends were taken captive, meaning they were like prisoners. King Nebuchadnezzar had attacked the Israelites and then he had taken some of the men back to Babylon with him. Like that would have been crazy. Have any of you ever moved to a different country? Like there would have been so many new things. They would have had to learn the language. They'd have to learn how to write it, how to read it. They'd live in a completely new home and the food. There'd be so many different kinds of food. Did, did you say food? Hello, Cedric. Uh, hello. Boy, boys and girls, this is Cedric. He is the person in charge of all the food in our cafeteria here at the laboratory. Actually, I prefer to be known as either Cedric the chef or I know better as Cedric, the tantalizer of the taste buds. You see, I am so much more than just uh, someone, a cook at the cafeteria line. I'm so much more than that, but uh, okay. Hello, children. Um, but I heard you say something about food. So what amazing dish can I make for you today, Mademoiselle? Uh, nothing really. We just heard this story in the Bible of, about Daniel and his three friends. Ah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, no? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you know the story, Cedric. Oh, but of course. Uh, the one thing I don't understand is that, you know, they were there in this amazing palace and yet all that they had, they must have had a very poor chef because they just ate the vegetables, right? If it were me, I would start off with an appetizer. Oh, I happen to have one right here, okay? Uh, an appetizer such as this one right here. This is what I would serve. This is the beautiful Sapode de Sel Cracklins topped with delicious creamy formage. Mm -hmm. That is crackers with cheese whiz. Cr just crackers? No, 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 no. You are so wrong. Uh, this is premium plus salted tops. These are the best of the best. Okay, you are discriminating taste. You're kind of a fancy eater. Okay, no problem. You're a fancy eater. Maybe you would like this as the appetizer, no? A little bit different. We've got some fancy spit peanut butter and the fromage. More crackers and cheese. You know, they look fine, but... Okay, you know. just fine, just fine. Okay, we can, we can up that a little bit more. For the main course, I would bring out this amazing creation. This is the tube steak with the delicious legume sauce. You mean cut up wieners and pork and beans? You know, when you say it like that, it sounds so ordinary, but uh, for me, this is comfort food and this is what I can make and I make it very well, I think. Um, but 
you know, I, 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 I try my best with all of these things that oh, I make. Oh, okay, Cedric. What about the Bible story we heard about Daniel and his three mm -hmm. friends who refused to eat the royal fruit, food and ate only vegetables? Well, you know what? I am amazed because I think that refusing that royal food, that must have been difficult for them because it, I'm sure the food in the past would have been the best of the best, right? Amazing. Uh, so why did they not eat it? Well, actually, it's most likely because God had told the Israelites not to eat food that had been offered to idols or to oh. false gods because mm. God wanted them to follow the one true God at all times. You know, it is impressive that they were that obedient and all that they ate was those veggies. It's not everyone's favorite thing to eat, but you know what? Vegetables are very good for you, right? It's important to have them. So children, make sure you eat your veggies all the time. Be big and strong because you eat your veggies. You know, we're, we've been looking at these Old Testament stories and as we're sharing, we were, we're trying to connect them to Jesus, Cedric, but I have to admit this one, I'm having a hard time connecting this one to Jesus. Hmm. Actually, I think I can help you. Uh, you see, because they are to be very obedient, right? Even in mm -hmm. the small little mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But no one follows that perfectly, right? We all mess up, except for Jesus Christ. You see, mm -hmm. Jesus, he, he always did what the Father wanted. He never messed up. He always was obedient in everything that he did. He never sinned. And so maybe the lesson is that we need to always be obedient, no matter if it's a really big thing or a small thing. You know, that makes sense. Daniel and his friends, they could have just decided to eat that food, but they chose not to. I, I think it's sort of like when we say, uh, how are you saying English again? Uh, oh, it's a little white lie, right? Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as just a little white lie, right? If it's a lie, that means it's wrong and it's bad. We shouldn't do that, right? So we always need to do the right thing. You know, what a good reminder. We're always supposed to do the right thing, no matter how big or small it is. And you know, the Bible talked about the difference that made when Daniel and his friends, they, they listened to God because it said that God blessed them with knowledge and mm. with wisdom and understanding. And they actually became really important in the king's service at the end of it. What a great example to stand up for what's right and always obey God. Hmm. Uh, I wish I was so smart and knowledgeable like Danielle and his friends, but you know, because I think I'm a pretty good chef, but I could always make some improvement and maybe I just need to think a little bit more and you know, I have an idea. For dinner tonight, I will do the tube steak or you call them the wieners. I will do that with the beans and I won't stop there. I will today go with the cheese on top of that and even more, I will put the crackers on top of that. It will be magnifique. Uh, I will do this for dinner. So um, I need to go and keep cooking. You're gonna come for dinner? Okay, so I need to go and cook. Go ahead, au revoir, goodbye children. Well, well, it looks like dinner is going to be interesting, but you know, boys and girls, I just want you to encourage you to live the way God wants you to live. Act the way he wants you to act. Be kind, be friendly, be helpful in little things, in big things, at home, at school, wherever you are. Let's always serve God in everything we do. All right, I am off to dinner, so we'll see you next time. Bye.